In our previous segments with author and journalist Ben Dongle, we discussed the developing conflicts between leftist leaders in South America and some of the social movements that brought them to power in the first place. But the book also touches on how the methods of Latin American social movements have influenced people in the United States. The, the challenges that we face in the North and the South are similar as far as you know, having corrupt bosses, facing uh, unemployment, terrible economic policies, environmental destruction. In many cases, movements, activists, governments, politicians in Latin America have been much more successful at overcoming these obstacles than we have on a, such a scale in the U.S. Some t successful examples of that are participatory budgeting in Porto Alegre, Brazil, um, where people have power over how their budgets are organized and spent within their local communities. And that's pulling political power um, away from the government and into the communities where it's needed the most. Porto Alegre began the process in the late 1980s, and by 2006, a report from the World Watch Institute estimated that more than 1,200 municipalities in the world had adopted participatory budgeting. And by 2009, it had arrived in the United States. The Real News spoke to Inez Sommer, a filmmaker and resident of Chicago's 49th Ward. Uh, we were all told that there are other municipalities in the world, uh, mainly in South America and some in Europe, that use this process uh, with great results. Uh, but we would be the first municipality in the United States to actually try this out. From the beginning, it seemed like a very kind of idealistic, almost utopian kind of project uh, that we as neighborhood residents were allowed to uh, come up with our own projects that then would be voted on by the neighborhood. So some people were kind of suspicious, why is this being done? Uh, is this worth my effort, etc. But after a while, I think a lot of people were won over and it was really quite an incredible energy because people got very excited that they were being asked about uh, changes in their own neighborhood. Then people uh, decided to sign up to different committees and they met for many months and came up with proposals. Those proposals were then being presented uh, in several open meetings and uh, online to the neighborhood. And then um, I believe in April, people came out and could vote on these proposals. Come on in. Come on in. The day of the vote was just incredible. There was such an energy there. Uh, nobody knew how many people would show up, maybe 100 people, 200 people, but I think the last count was that it was like 1,500 or 1,600 people showed up to vote. Um, and people spent a lot of time at that polling place just reading through all these proposals that had been put together, being very uh, kind of considerate and thoughtful about how they wanted that money to be apportioned. Ballots only, please. Thank you so much. In 1996, the World Bank reported that after seven years of participatory budgeting at the mayor's office in Porto Alegre, Brazil, health and education spending had risen from a 13% share of the budget to almost 40%. In the case of Chicago's 49th Ward, the city limited their $1.3 million allotment to infrastructure spending only. Projects that got the most votes really had a lot to do with uh, more cultural projects, uh, such as um, beautiful murals that now graze a lot of the underpasses, or artistic bi bicycle racks. Sommer points out that while it's certainly a more democratic process than having just the elected officials vote, there's still work to be done to make it fully representative of the community. Not everybody can really participate. There might be language barriers, there might be the fact that people work two jobs and don't have the time uh, to participate. So all, those are all stumbling blocks for sure. But Sommer was pleased with steps taken to remove some of the legal barriers to participation. People didn't have to be of voting age. They could be uh, 16 years old or older and then they were allowed to vote. And the same was true for residency requirements. So nobody checked if, uh, if you were an immigrant or not an immigrant, if you were legal, et cetera. So it really opened the door for a lot of participation. My uh, now 17-year-old son, who is a high school senior, decided to return to the participatory budgeting process this year. And he now actually chairs a committee, which is an incredible responsibility and uh, for a 17-year-old. And he really feels that, uh, that there are opportunities for poor democracy in this country, which is wonderful to see that you know, he feels empowered to participate in a, in a process that is really usually just open to adults.